Hello, welcome to the show, The Total You, where we're discussing the whole body, your mind, body, soul, and spirit as a whole, because God wants us to be whole and complete. And this is what this show is about, The Total You. And so we're discussing things that make us whole and those things that separate and make us incomplete. So today we have a really special guest. But before, I want to make sure that you know that this is the Total You. I'm your guest host. I'm your host, rather, Evangelist Bereese Wallace. And we're under the direction of Bishop Joel T. Wallace at Abundant Faith Cathedral. I have a special guest because this young lady actually asked me if she could be interviewed. Now, I think that is an awesome thing. This is a young lady who's in the church, and I'm going to have her sh- please tell us her name. Okay. Hi, my name is Leah Irving. Um, I'm 15 years old. Um, I am a part of Abundant Faith Cathedral, um, headed by Bishop Joe T. Wallace. Um, I go to Cass Technical High School. What grade are you in? A 10th. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've been saved really all my life. I grew up in a church, but I got the Holy Ghost um, Mother's Day okay. of 2022 or 2021. Okay, so that's what, three years now? Almost three years. Somewhere around there. Hey, okay, that's good. Amen. And this, okay, you said you got it then, but you said you had been in the church almost all of your life. So what happened between all that time and then up to the point where you got the Holy Ghost? What was different? Um, The funny thing is I had been trying to get the Holy Ghost for a while. I believe I started around six or seven and I was so pumped up to get the Holy Ghost and everything. And I just wasn't getting it. And it was a point in my life where like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> like, okay. I just got so discouraged. And, you know, I, I felt like I was putting my all and I, I didn't understand why it was so hard for me to get it. Um, and what led up to me getting it was my nephew actually got the Holy Ghost okay. the day before I got it. And yes. he was, my nephew, uh, mind you, he's like 10, I believe. Okay. And I was like spiritually jealous. That's what my mom calls it because I'm like, how this little boy got it before me? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like 13 or 14 at this time. And I've been doing it for decades at okay. this point, for about a decade. Um, so I went to church the next day. It wasn't a lot of people in church and I was like, I'm going to get this Holy Ghost. <laughs> and it started off as broken tongues, but you know, we got there. And okay. I, I've been overjoyed. Um, I think my, um, reasoning for wanting to get the Holy Ghost in the first place is, um, you know, I wanted to be sure where my destination was after I died. Okay. So that was really a scary moment for me to struggle getting it, you know, um, when you never know how long you have on the earth. Oh, um, but when this I, is from you? This is a like little kid thinking about, well, I'm, where am I going after this? Yes. Okay. Um, so my mom did put the spirit, spirit um, she put the fear of God in me. Okay. And, you know, when I got it, I'm thinking like, oh, everything is going to get so much better. Like everything is just going to fall into place. Okay. And it got kind of worse. <laughs> the enemy <laughs> kept attacking me. Okay. Um, to this day, you know, he attacks me, but I feel like I'm growing strength and okay. I'm, you know, learning as I do the trials and tribulations and go through. And okay. Yeah. So you notice the difference between when you when you didn't have the Holy Ghost and going to church yes. and from when you got the Holy Ghost and you were going to church. Yes. What was the difference? Do you remember? Um, I feel like I wasn't in tune with not only the word of God, but just the prayer. It's like it was boring as a little kid. Like, you know, I just didn't understand the message. Um, okay. But with this um, Holy Ghost, it's like it was kind of like a new enlightenment. Like okay. I actually understood the Bible. And that also came with, you know, like growing up as far as age wise. Okay. Um, I had a more understanding as far as like, you know, books in general. Okay. Literal. Um, so... When I was sitting in church as a little kid, it just, I don't know, I didn't have that connection. Okay. But whatever I didn't understand, when I got the Holy Ghost, God would give it to me, All right. you know, okay. my own way. Okay. Yeah. So you were praying and things and reading the Word before you even got the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay. Um, in a weird way, I feel like um, 
as the trials and tribulations went forth, it was harder for me to read and it was harder for me to understand. Um, okay. You know, as I went forth, it was kind of, I had to fight okay. um, to, you know, do the things that I was doing before with ease. Oh my goodness. I got to get this one. Okay. What you were doing before was just coming naturally and now you're, now you're getting hit or bombarded by things to tell you, oh, don't go down that road again because that's too goody goody. <laughs> and now you're getting hit saying, well, you shouldn't be doing that, but you were doing okay before, but now you're getting bombarded by the negative things. Right. Yep. And that's Attacked by the devil. Yes. Okay. See, <laughs> now, and see, this is something you now realize before you really weren't being attacked right. by the devil because right. the devil, what? What we teach? He had you. You were on his territory. Right. But see, there once. Was no threat. Yes, you weren't a threat to him. Yeah. Now you are. Right. Yeah, watch out, devil. <laughs> <laughs> we think, okay, so we know that once you got the Holy Ghost, things changed. Yeah. Now, being a, um, a young person in school, uh -huh. did that change also? Yes. Um, you know, as far as like just in general, it's a big change from middle school to high school. There's more things you need to adapt to, uh, more things you need to learn, and more things that's expected from you. But um, it's like more beliefs or um, ideals in general are pushed um, for you, and it's kind of hard to fight it off. Okay. Uh, you have like. Um, LGBTQ plus things that okay. you have to worry about and it's a whole bunch of different types of people with different backgrounds okay. and you kind of have to stay stern in your uh, mindset and what okay. you believe in so you don't alter. Okay. Um, but with me growing up in church, it w <laughs> I knew I wasn't altering no matter how hard it got. Okay. You know, I knew what I was standing for. I just didn't know how to support it. Okay. So that's what came into me trying to read the word so I can, you know, back what back I Back what you saying. were standing yeah. up for. Now you knew what you were standing up with right. for. Okay, he's, the Bible has got your back is what right. I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but you see, and you come against a lot of things in school. Did the children ever um, harass you or bully you? No. They never? Okay. No. Um, I wasn't the type of person to, like, boast about being a Christian. But if okay. you were to ask me, or, like, you know, ask my opinion on stuff, you will probably be the first one to know, yes, I'm Christian. I don't have this um, set of views. Okay, like okay. So, you know, they knew it. But it was never, like, a situation where um, somebody attacked me for being okay. Christian. Okay. Um, but it was certain uh, things I felt left out. Okay. Um, I felt like they were leaving me out because I was Christian. Like, okay. oh, she's too goody two shoes. Like, okay. she's not going to do this. Okay. Um, and then, you know, at, on one hand, I was like, okay, like, I feel left out. Like, this is frustrating. And on the other hand, I felt respected because, you know, certain things Christians don't do, you know. Okay. Why would you ask them? <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, that was good. Okay, but you said you kind of left out sometimes. Okay, were you ever tempted to, oh, well, these are parties. One party won't hurt. Yes. <laughs> Say it again. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I was never a party goer anyway. Yeah, but, but I, mm -hmm. you know, but it was certain stuff that I had to, like, talk with God with, see if it was, like, you Give know. me an example. Give me um, an example. I think my biggest example, and this wasn't really, I don't know, so anime. Um I was, um, I grew up around a lot of anime lovers, and I realized when I was watching anime, I started to get the spirit of fear. Okay. Um, I couldn't walk around the house with uh, the lights off, certain okay. stuff like that. I started seeing shadows. It was really scary. Okay. Um, but it was pushed around me, like, you know, as um, people outside of the spiritual or Christian um you know, world, they didn't understand why I was trying to stray away from anime. Okay. Um, you know, because it's just a regular TV show in their eyes. So it was kind of hard. Um, just, to, I feel like people didn't really understand my point of view or my perspective of certain things. Okay. Um, and like I said, I didn't really know how to back how I was feeling. Um, another um, example is when 
I wanted to go to the movies with my sister, I mean, my niece and my brother. Okay. And I I just, like, had a strong sensation that it was danger at the movies. Okay. And I cried about it because I, like, really wanted to go. We had planned it. Um, they were already headed there or getting mm-hmm. ready to go. And mm-hmm. I was like, I can't cancel on them. But I did end up canceling because, you know, I want to put my well-being first okay. and my safety, of course. Okay. But, you know... They did look at me like, what are you talking about? Like, I was crazy okay. for that. So, yeah. In that instance, did anything harmful come to, to those people who went out when you were saying that you would, certain things were might, you were scared of that? Um, I don't think they, I don't think anything happened to them. Um, they didn't really enjoy the movie. That's all. Okay. But I just, I don't know. It was it was too much. I really think it was because I had homework to do and, and um, you know, I hadn't did it. I had promised my mom I was going to get it done before I went out, okay. but then my brother had to spend a night. It was just too much going on. Okay, so you were going to keep your promise. Yeah. Yeah, instead of going out to the party yes. or to the movies. Yes. All right. And see, that, that was something, a mindset. You had a different mindset, whereas yeah. before you could have said, I'm going to go out to this party regardless because... Mm-hmm. See, amen. So that's a change, a change that came on because now you've got the Holy Ghost leading you. Yes. All right. There was um, you mentioned LGB, well LGBTQ, <laughs> all the initials. Okay. <laughs> what is it? Lesbian, bisexual, bisexual trans, trans, queer, queer, um, and a- plus. A sec- yeah. A plus. And plus. Yes. Okay. I had never, well, I've been out of school a long time, but you have a lot of this in your school system now that you're going through? There's a lot of people I've met who are either um, in a part of the queer community. I've never met anybody who was like trans or, you know, trying to be trans, but um, I do have a friend that's, um, he's gay, so he's, I don't know what community he's part of. L G, he's the G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but um we never had like a, a conflict. He knew I was Christian. Okay. You know, I knew he was gay, but it was like a level of respect. And even if he did or we did think about, you know, each other in a certain way, it was always um, you know, to ourselves. We didn't ever, you know, uh, address it basically. Okay. Um but yeah, so I didn't run in um, and so any, oh, actually I did. Uh oh, come on. Um, there is a club, um, with, you know, all the communities and it was, uh, talk about supporting them. And I had, I think, uh, put my name down for the list in ninth grade, uh, not because of supporting them, but I guess I wanted to see their perspectives and okay. stuff, but, um, I had forgot all about the club. Um, I didn't really have any interest in it as I was going forward, but I was in the club and they asked me if I wanted to be in a parade. And I didn't know that it was a club asking me. I thought it was a teacher who had extra um, wristbands and just asked me and I ended up being in a parade. I had to be in the parade with the LGBT um, Ooh, okay. plus. And it was kind of conflicting. Like I felt like I wasn't supposed to be there. Okay. You know, but on the same side, like I had, friends that were in that okay. community so no as a christian it I was feel very uncomfortable yes confusing too and yeah because it's very hard to hurt people that you know right but you've overcome that or are you still friends with these people and they still realize that you can't support them like that anymore or i'm still friends with them um i did i did decide to leave um the club but i just didn't tell them that it's because i'm christian um but i have had like um not that i believe that you know um it's not you know against the words of the lord but i just wanted to know how to address the fact that i'm christian and why is it wrong but it's because it's kind of hard to tell someone who's turn to the LGBTQ community because they feel excluded. And, you know, it's a lot of reason that people go to that side. So it's kind of hard to tell them, like, that's a wrong way to grieve or that's a wrong uh, way to turn. 
when that's the only option they had or might have saw fit. Okay. So, yeah. That so, the Lord is blessing you to be able to communicate and to relate to them even though you're not in that. Yes. As a child of God. Yes. Amen. So, I thank and praise the Lord for that. There is like, um, as a child of God who's in the church and who's in school, how would you recommend someone um, re um, respond to being solicited by someone? You know what I mean? Yes. Um. <laughs> I'm um, putting you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Um, I honestly wouldn't even know how to, that's a good question. Okay. Um, I wouldn't know how to respond to that. Um, as far as solicited, do you mean like harassed or not? You're or? asked to be, um, I want you to be my girlfriend. Oh, okay. So okay. I can address that. Okay. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of experience with that actually okay. recently. I just told them that, um, that I wasn't ready to be in a relationship. Um, and when people ask me why, um, I'm young. I honestly don't believe in dating young because okay. it's a lot of teens, um, not to target anybody, but it's okay. a lot of teens who are trying to build relationships um, with goals that 30 year olds have, you know, 30 year old relationships Ooh, okay. have developed. Okay. And they have gone through stuff to get to where they, you know, are. And you can't really trust what people put on social media anyway. Ooh, okay. So it's just Come like, on. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, um, you are setting these goals and standards that people have built over time and not saying that teen relationships can't work, but just for me, it's too much stress. I'm, um, you know, I'm trying to be my own person. And as we know, uh, females, uh, they develop okay. quicker mentally than boys. So I really don't need a childish boy um, setting me back. Okay. You know? She doesn't want to take care of you guys. You got that? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I have responsibilities that I have to take care of, and it's just not the time for me. Um, but to people who do want a relationship, I feel like you have to keep in mind, you know, um, I feel like teen pregnancies is like a really... You got to speak up. What a what? Okay, so <laughs> teen pregnancies is a really high risk nowadays. Okay. And it's 15-year-olds with children. So it's like, what are you looking for in that relationship? that your 15 year old self, what are you looking for in that relationship? You know, as an underage youth, like what are y'all really doing in that yeah. relationship? Um, Cause I, I feel like it may come from people, you know, not having a dad or okay. not having that sense of love. So okay. they, you know, go outside to find that okay. source. Okay. Um, But if some people just might want the comfort, like if you just wanna, but you have to know what's right for you at the end of the day. If you feel like you can handle a relationship and a boyfriend, hey, and if your parents allow it, then I that's... like that part. It says your parents allow it. Yeah. Okay, but um, like you said, they might need that maybe because their parents are not there. Right. But if you had a friend who was being, um, you said spoken to a lot about someone uh, being approached a lot by the other so sex per se. Mm -hmm. I want to be your boyfriend. I want to be your girlfriend. We need to date. Can you go out with me? Kind of stuff. And you knew that this person was uh, in need of. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest? What would you say to them? Um, honestly, I'm the type of person who would like to address the situation with the boy. So I might go with the friend to that boy and explain like why they don't want to be with you. Okay. But Honestly, as um, a whole, I feel like um, it should be established um, that when girls say no, they mean, mean no. no. Yes, and I feel like um, that's a type of generational thing that we have not talked about is that boys get away with a lot that they shouldn't. Okay. Um, and there's a whole lot, of, that's a whole nother, you know, <laughs> conversation. But yeah, it's not okay. You you know we should respect each other, and that goes the same for girls. It's a lot of you know okay non respect, and okay. that's being taught and it's being accepted. Okay, you know, that it shouldn't. It's is even as little as catcalling. That can be a big you know thing. Okay. Um. So yeah, just respect others. 
and they don't seem to do that very yeah. much now. And so you would tell them, look, what, first, respect yourself. Yes. And a lot of young ladies that I've come across, they don't seem to believe in themselves. Yeah, confidence is everything. Their confidence is very, very low. And so you would suggest, look, take care of yourself first. Yes. Love you first. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. <laughs> because if you love yourself first, then you're worthy of being loved by somebody who's going to really, really love you back the way you're supposed to be loved. What? I don't want anybody, you know, yeah. I thank you for what you men said. Okay, I want to know, because you asked me about this interview, what exactly did you want to tell the people, or if you had a format to tell the young people? I would really want to start with, um, as a youth, we have an impact and we have a voice. Okay. Um, it doesn't need to be forced, you know. Um, I feel like we should have some um, control over what's being put in front of us, what's being put out, or how it affects us. We should have some say in that. Okay. Um, and also, like, we need to address some of the things that's happened in the past so that we can move forward. There's still a lot of generational, as I stated, generational trauma and stuff that's just not being handled well and it's being passed down and people are not addressing it. Okay. Um, it I, feel, I really feel like it starts from home. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing I should say. But, okay, you like you said, it's generational things that have come across. If a person feels like they're trapped, what would you, we need to have um, places where they can talk to someone mm -hmm. who, I mean, and do they have those going on in school? We used to have counselors in school. Yes, we have counselors, um, but when I talk to a lot of my friends, they said they don't feel um, right talking to a counselor, be a counselor because um, a counselor can still contact your parents and stuff if they feel like, you know, it's necessary, which, you know, it, you, it needs to right? be, yeah. But um, at the same time, they feel like talking to a stranger is just, like, um, not cool for them. or They don't feel right giving a stranger information about, you know, sharing personal and information. And what would you say that to that? Honestly, I love my counselor. I was happy to go to counseling, okay. um, you know, and share my story. Because sometimes you need a listener. You don't really need, okay. you know, the input back. Okay. Just to let somebody hear you. Okay. And I'm always the person, if they want to come to me and talk, I am so open because okay. I'm a good listener. <laughs> but <laughs> but okay. it's just like um, I said, to me, a stranger is better because when you have like somebody you know, they know behind the story. So they might have a different perspective on it. But okay. when it's a stranger, they don't know what else has happened. They don't know the other person's point of view. They only know what you're saying, you're saying. and okay. right and how that's affecting you so they can address that okay. instead of worrying about well you're wrong in this situation no okay. it's affecting me and i'm hurting because of it so let's address that first and then you know okay okay and see the thing is i like is the word says in a multitude of counseling there is safety so when you're talking to someone who is over you who has been trained in these kind of things that helps a little right yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people are not accessing that avenue. They're thinking that they're having to go through all their pains by themselves behind closed doors. Nobody needs to know that I what? My household is all in a wreck. <laughs> that, you know, my mother and my father are fighting, or my mother and father don't agree on anything, or my siblings are all acting strange, and here I am, I'm trying to hold myself together. But there is help, and this is what we're trying to get so that you as a young person are saying, look, go out there and get the help. You've got to say so in what's going to happen down the pike. You're stronger than what you think you are in any situation. And I'm going to say this, and when you get the Holy Ghost, there's even more strength. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't mention that you were um, the youngest of what? How many siblings? Eleven. Eleven siblings. Total, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the youngest. So, did all of your siblings? Did you ever get in trouble with all your siblings? Or no? Um, I feel like um, most of my siblings we've ha have this thing where most of them feel like a parent more okay. than a sibling. 
like my sister, I call her my mom, my nephews, her children. Um, I call them my brothers okay. because, you know, we just have that type of close relationship, but she still gives me guidance. She still um, is like a guardian to me in a way. Okay. Um, she's kind of like my personal mentor alongside okay. with my mom because she's really um, my counselor at home. Okay. Um, but, yeah, um, my dad's side of the family, which is the other <laughs> five or six kids, okay. <laughs> they're not um, saved. Okay. So all of my sisters are saved on my mom's side, except for my brother. Okay. Um, and I, I felt like um, I kind of re relate with him in a way because he was the same as me. He was struggling to get the Holy Ghost. He really wanted it, except I got it and he didn't. Okay. So he kind of turned away from, he got discouraged too. Okay. Um, I actually had a dream about helping him okay. because, you know, we, we relate okay. um, in that way. Uh, but yeah, it did affect me that they all started young. So I felt like I was pushing myself. Like I want to be the youngest in the family. Like I want to get it right this time, <laughs> and it wasn't happening. Okay. Um, but when I did get it, they were so happy for me. Okay. Even though I got it after my nephew, I will never. <laughs> I can never come back from that. I am but, glad yeah. that you think because a lot of people don't have that family bonding. Yeah. that you have and I'm gonna say this a lot of people relate to other people outside like you said your other siblings they're not the immediate family but you've got um, cousins who might be able to relate to you better and there's nothing wrong with reaching out to them is it no. and that's a that's the part where as a young person don't I want them to understand that there's help out there all you got to do is reach out for it. Right. Even if you just, what, they've got police officers now mm -hmm. who are willing to, look, you know, I'm help, you know, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank the praise of the Lord because you offered up a lot of things that we could really relate to as a child who's in the church, mm -hmm. who wants to stay put in the church. Right. So I'm going to say one well, real quick, what would you suggest the church do to keep you in church? Real quick. question. Mm -hmm. um, oh, um, I think just being interactive and realizing that um, some people come from homes that aren't, you know, Christian. Okay. So um, accept them as they are and train them up to who you want to be. Because, okay. you know, you shouldn't turn away anybody because of their views. So just guide so keep them. keep active, yeah. huh? Okay, wait, wait. So we're going to have a bowling team on this day. We're going to have a swimming team. On, we're going to yeah. have a debate team on here. Okay, we're going to have the contest about the Bible on this one. So it's like just keeping them, keeping them active and keeping right. them fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep you active. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank and praise the Lord for her joining us. This is again Lisa, Leah. not Leah. Leah, I'm Leah. What's the last name? Irving. I, Irving, because I want to yeah. call her by her mother's name. <laughs> Leah Irving. Okay. So we thank her for coming out for us. She's a student at Cast Tech, so she's been offering up the things that are going on with her and what she can do in the church that is different than just being out there in the world. So we thank you for coming in and joining us on The Total You. Hope you'll tune in again soon. Don't forget, we're on at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. starting on Sunday evenings to Sunday at mornings. Amen. Amen. The Total You. The whole part of you is a complete package. And God wants to make sure that you hold mind, body, soul, and spirit. Until the next time, I love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.